Hey guys, are you ready to talk about the most anticipated film of 2024? Let's go ahead and get into it. My name is Brandon Kithavery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on everyone? And welcome back to another great epic episode of Just My Opinion for my Madam Web review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, guys, I know y'all was looking forward to this. Now we have Madam Web, Sony's latest Spider-Man film in their cinematic universe. This film is being directed by Miss S.J. Clarkson. And if we scroll down and just look at her filmography, she did Anatomy of a Scandal, Succession, which I heard was a pretty good show. I haven't seen it. But I heard it was pretty good. The Defenders, she did two episodes of those. Jessica Jones, Orange is the New Black. If you've seen any of these properties, please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But when it comes to Madam Web, I was kind of scratching my head like everybody else when it was first announced, when the trailers first dropped, like why in the world are you making this film? I don't think anyone has any interest in it. Now, if I were to put myself in Sony's shoes, I would be trying to make as much Spider-Man property as I possibly can. I mean, it is a big IP potentially billion dollar films if it's done correctly at the box office in theaters. But of course they have this weird deal with Marvel that they can't really use Spider-Man, the character, unless Marvel is involved. And Marvel Disney has their hands tied behind their back as well. But when it comes to Sony's Spider-Man universe, I did like Venom. I thought that that was pretty decent. Venom 2 I thought was horrible. I also thought Morbius was horrible. And I went into this film thinking that it was horrible too. Also, just want to let you know that my knowledge of Madam Web is not that deep. I wasn't introduced to that character in the comics. I was introduced to that character in the 90s animated cartoon. And out of all of the Spider-Man characters, friends, families, colleagues, the entire rogues gallery, Madam Web was the character that I knew of the least. When those episodes would air, I didn't really enjoy them that much. It was kind of a confusing character and just took me a while to get a grasp of everything and how it worked. I was kind of like saying, hey, can we fast forward and move on to the next? And so that's just another reason why I was not really excited about this film. My expectations going into this were super duper low. I did not think it was going to be good. And I was just saying to myself, okay, just don't be hot trash garbage. And that will be acceptable at the very least. But before I get into all the nitty gritty, before I talk about all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this fan, Madam Webb, is all about. Cassandra Webb, Dakota Johnson, develops the power to see the future. Forced to confront revelations about her past, she forges a relationship with three young women bound for powerful destinies if they can all survive a deadly present. Now, the very first thing that I really did like about this film, and I'm kind of surprised by this, is three of the main leads. Not Dakota Johnson. We will talk about her in a second. But I am talking about Sydney Sweeney, Celeste O'Connor, and Isabella Merced. And the reason why I say that is, when I was watching this film, it actually looked like Sony had cast young girls, young women that were actually in high school. It was believable to me, especially when they was put up beside Dakota Johnson, who is a young woman. The reason why I say that is, in a number of these comic book adaptations, these superhero movies, they're trying to cast characters that appear to be in high school, but they're in their mid to upper 20s and sometime lower 30s. And it won't be just too jarring, but it is noticeable. But that's not the case in this film. So that is something that I did appreciate. I also like the way that they reacted to all of their surroundings in the first act. In America, we have a three-act structure, of course. And in the first act, to be honest with you guys, it wasn't that bad. I was saying to myself when I was in the auditorium and watching this, like, okay, hey, if I was in the same exact situation that these young three girls were in, I would be doing the exact same thing that they're doing. I would also be asking the same questions and reacting the exact same way. So that made sense. I don't want to say that I was able to relate to the characters, but at the very least, they wasn't doing anything stupid to where it made me want to run out of the theater in frustration. I was saying, okay, this seems very realistic. Again, I would be doing the exact same thing. And also, I found a number of the jokes in the first or second act of this film quite funny too. There was three jokes in particular that I remember actually laughing out loud 
when I was watching this, and it wasn't just me, it was the entire auditorium. So great job there. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I'll just go ahead and put a note on this. There was a particular scene dealing with a baby shower. I got a lot of laughs out of it. It was funny. I'm just being honest. And out of the three or four main leads, I want to say that Sydney Sweeney was the best. If you're familiar with her, you know that she was from Euphoria, the HBO show. And I don't even know if that's coming back or not. They have at least two seasons. She wasn't as good in Madam Web as she is in Euphoria, but I still thought that she did a pretty decent job in this and I appreciated everything that she was able to dish out at the screen. But other than that, guys, that is going to conclude everything that I really did enjoy about the film or thought was passable. Now let me transition to everything else that I just despised in this movie. Not gonna waste your time, but this is not a good movie. This is pretty bad. It is not just complete garbage trash to the point to where I want to drink bleach or bring out the bottle, but my goodness gracious, it's dang near close and I'm just keeping it real with you. If it wasn't for all the things that I said that I liked about this film in the positive section just a few moments ago, I probably would be bringing out the bleach because just some of the actions in this movie are completely ridiculous. First of all, Madam Webb herself, or Cassandra Webb, played by Dakota Johnson, she was okay, but I always want to say to myself, you need to have a main character, a protagonist, that the audience is going to like. I did not hate her character, but I did not like her either. They tried to give her character the excuse that she's not that warm, not too family-oriented and friendly because of her upbringing and her being an orphan and living in foster care. But at the same time, there was no really redeeming qualities about her. I mean, she had a job that she really wasn't a passion about. She was a paramedic and that is commendable, but there was just no passion there. She just had a job that she wanted to fulfill to pay some bills in my opinion. She also had this large disdain for her late mother that she never met. And that was puzzling for me to comprehend as well. Maybe it made sense to you if you decide to see this movie, but it did not make sense to me. But the main corporate in this movie that just makes it so horrible is there is so much logic and reason that is just thrown completely out of the window and it doesn't add up, it doesn't make any sense, and I'm really, really surprised that Sony and everybody involved approved this. Early on at the very beginning of the movie, where the characters are in a debacle trying to get out of it, solve the problem, get to safety, all they had to do was go to the police station and be like, hey, this is the situation, this is what's going on, it is not what you perceive it to be, and hey, there's your movie right there, but because the writing is so bad, the script didn't allow it to do that, and that just makes everything around it make no sense whatsoever. Just go to the police, and then your problem is solved, and you will be saved. Another thing that I could not stand in this movie was the lore, was the backstory of Madam Webb and or where those powers originated. I don't want to get into spoiler territory right now because this is a non-spoiler review. I do have a spoilers review that I did post with E-Man that we will talk about later on in this video. But that whole backstory served no purpose. I'll just have to say that it has to deal with spider people. And they was one of the most useless group of people that I've ever seen in any comic book adaptation. And it also came across very silly. You can say, well, hey, B, all superhero films, all comic book adaptations are silly. Is human beings running around with superpowers flying in space, et cetera, et cetera. No, you have rich, deep stories to back all that up to make it make sense. And that's not the case here at all. They had so many opportunities in my opinion to save the day but they didn't want to do anything but just sit on their behind and be onlookers and when everything is revealed at certain points in the movie you're just asking yourself what the hell were you doing this whole time why did you not get involved you could have stopped this this and that but no you just sat back in the cut and let it happen I cannot respect your involvement at all this is atrocious another great scene in this movie is the villain one of the worst and he can be described as a wannabe spider-man I have never seen any villain any antagonist in a movie make things so difficult for himself when he's trying to accomplish a goal every time he tried harder he made his situation worse it would have been better of him just to sit back and let nature handle all of his business but every time he got involved 
He just continuously dropped the ball over and over and over again. Now, the character Ezekiel is being played by somebody by the name of Tahir Rahim, and I've never heard of him before, and he looks decent on screen, but my goodness gracious, I am not exaggerating when I say that this character is making things difficult. If you're trying to kill people, if you're trying to take them out, why are you drawing so much attention to yourself? It is so easy to make something seem like an accident, but he is acting like he's performing at a circus, creating a bunch of spectacle, having spotlights on him when he's trying to get the job done. And it makes no sense. I mean, if I'm trying to kill somebody, I am not going to walk into a full public area where bright lights are on, where everybody can see me and a suit that will stand out like a sore thumb. I'm just gonna blend in with everybody else and wait till these characters are alone and then take them out in a group or one by one, just like that. But no, this character doesn't wanna do that. He wants to have all the theatrics. He wants to be dramatic about it, and it's a damn shame. And what makes it worse is this character has powers. You're able to take out the police. You're able to do this, jump on walls, climb, and have all of these extra abilities that a normal person doesn't have, and you still can accomplish your goal. Oh, it just doesn't make any sense. And you also have all these other resources at your disposal, but you're not using them properly. And it's just a big waste. In addition to that, guys, there are a ton of cringe moments in this film that are going to make you laugh out loud or want to drive your head through a stake. When the meme community does get a hold of this movie, they're going to have a field day with making all types of inappropriate jokes. There's one scene that I'm thinking of where Dakota Johnson's character, Cassandra Webb, was trying to teach the three girls CPR. I don't know why I was thinking this way, but I just couldn't help it. When you see the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And it just goes to, and I just, and there's just so many logical things that don't make sense in this movie. If I'm an assassin, if I am a ninja, if my goal in life is to go around working for a secret covert agency to kill people and take them out and not get caught, why would I have an identification badge on my person saying that I'm an assassin? That doesn't make any sense. There are characters in this movie that are doing things like this and you're just like, what the F is going on? Why do you have that? Who made this for you? This is stupid, I'm not exaggerating. And you also had another supporting character in this film that decided to do something that will make him seem like a kidnapping pedophile. Now, I love my family and friends and I will go to the ends of the earth for them. But if they ask me to do a certain favor or two that doesn't really make sense, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I can do this, this, and this, but I'm not gonna do that, that, and that. You did not think this through, absolutely not. Characters in this film just don't think about things like that and they're just going, progressing on, and again, just adds on to the absolutely makes no sense pile. I also don't understand how somebody can be on wanted posters, but then just make international flights back and forth in and out of the country. Again, there's just a number of things that don't make sense. I can go on and on and listing them, but then we'll be getting into spoiler territory and I don't want to do that. And then at the very end of this film, in the third act, Cassandra Webb, Madam Webb, played by Dakota Johnson, just out of nowhere, she's able to pull all types of random powers out of her butt out of nowhere and it's just silly i mean i'm just saying to myself okay how in the hell are you able to do that thanos with all six infinity stones wouldn't be able to do these powers that you just made up out of nowhere and this is just completely illogical and dumb and i don't want to be a part of this movie anymore i actually took off work and used some pto to go see this movie because they had it at 12 noon in the middle of the day and I, one of the biggest regrets I've had in my entire life, and I cannot get that PTO or time back, unfortunately. I actually feel like Sony owes me, and I want to write him a letter or something. Oh, yeah, guys, and I forgot to talk about this. The Spider-Girl people or the Spider-Women people, they're barely in the movie. Seriously. They literally have less than, like, 90 seconds of screen time. And it's just like, what the hell? The whole movie, I was waiting for them to reveal themselves in the way that they did, I'm just like, Jesus, what are y'all doing here? Crap bag fest, this movie right here. Guys, this movie is not good. This is the absolute worst out of all the Sony Spider-Man films. It's worse than Venom 1 and 2. It's worse than Morbius. How are you worse than Morbius? And I, I, I just don't understand what the hell they was thinking in this. It makes total sense that Dakota Johnson did not have faith in this movie if those rumors are true and she wasn't that enthused during the press rounds. I don't even know. I've never seen it in the interviews, but that's just what I heard. But Sony should be embarrassed by this film. And I know movies aren't easy to make and it can be very, very difficult. But still, man, this, this is just crazy. Sony, please listen to me. Stop making these individual films, whether it's in your own Spider-Man universe or not. 
make movies with Marvel. I understand I would not want to get rid of this property, this IP either. But every time you teamed up with Marvel Disney and did things with Tom Holland, the films are great and they made a hell of a lot of money. Just do that with everything. You cannot do it by yourself. You just can't. And you've proven yourself over and over and over again. Throw your ego in the trash. If you want to continue to make these films, just do it with Marvel and that would be to your benefit. Guys, I will go ahead and give my rating for this at the very end, but I do want to let you know, subscribe to the channel because me and E-Man with E-Man's movie reviews, we did record already. It's already uploaded because you're looking at it right now. Our full spoiler review for this film. This will be debuting Valentine's Day, Wednesday, February the 14th, 2024 at 12.30 p.m. CST. That's 12.30 p.m. CST. Me and E-Man also recorded a non-spoiler review that uh, we'll probably be releasing on his channel. So you may want to go check that out and hear all of his individual thoughts as well. But make sure you subscribe and come back and check out our full spoiler review. I think we talked about 40, 42 minutes in this review right here, just kind of laughing out loud at how silly, dumb, and ridiculous this whole thing is. But like I said, guys, I will go ahead and give my rating for this film at the very end of the video. But for now, guys, that is just my opinion. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Help me reach my next milestone of 50,000 subscribers. I'm getting close, 49.2. And again, I think I have E-Man's channel pulled up. I don't. Let me pull that up real quick and give uh, this brother some love as well. Uh, shout out to E-Man as well. Give him some love on his channel right here. But guys, if I were to rate Madam Webb out of a 1 out of 10, I will give this a solid 3 out of 10. Yes, a solid 3 out of 10. But guys, again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.